In this lesson, we're going to look at the wave function. Now, waves can be representations of a lot of different things. I've given some examples here. We can represent sound waves, light waves and water waves, all mathematically. I've said here many wave shapes, whether occurring in sound, light, water, electrical waves can be described mathematically and we can draw them. We've already done that in Intermediate 2 or National 5 and you've done it in Higher as well. Now, synthesizers generate new sounds by adding together different waveforms. It's something that, that happens all the time. Also, scientists studying wave power look at the effects of adding water waves together to generate more power. You've probably seen one of these things in oscilloscope in science where you can bring wave patterns up. You can plug lots of instruments into this um, and generate wave patterns from guitars, for example, and keyboards. Lots of ways of generating waves and also uh, adding waves together. If you go to the Science Centre in Glasgow, then there's a place where you can sit and two waves are, are um, come at you from different directions, two sound waves, and what happens is they cancel each other out and you don't hear any sound, which is quite interesting. What we're going to look at is what happens when you add a sine and a cos wave together. This is the idea behind the wave function, what happens when you add two waves together uh, with different uh, trigonometric ratios of sine plus cos. Now when you add two waves together, what happens is you get a brand new wave that's generated. Now the brand new wave, its amplitude is greater than the two that you've added together, which makes sense. And it's also been shifted left or right from the, the two original waves. So we can see here, we've got the cosine wave in the red, sine wave in the kind of darker red here. If we add these two together, we end up with this blue wave, which is cos x plus sine x. Now, it's really just a sine or a cosine wave. As I say, it's been the amplitude generated or made bigger, and it's also been shifted left or right, but it's still in the cos or the sine wave format. What the actual formula, if you like, of this wave is 1.4 cos x minus 45. So when you add these two waves together, a cos and a sine, you generate a cosine wave that's been shifted by 45 degrees to the right, if you like, and there's a new amplitude of 1.4 instead of the original waves have an amplitude of 1. What our task is to see what happens when you add different cosine waves and sine waves with different amplitudes together, whether it be positive or negative, and try and write it in this format with an amplitude here and how much the new cosine wave has been shifted left or right. We don't always have to use a cosine wave. You could have a sine wave here, for example, because a sine and cosine wave are effectively the same thing with different shifts. We will start looking at the cosine wave first of all. So how do we do this? Well, generally what happens is when you add the two waves, you get k, the amplitude here, we need to work that out, and you get alpha, which is the phase angle. And the first pass part of the process is to use the addition formula to multiply this out, which we learned in unit two. But I'll leave that to the next lesson. In the next lesson, we'll look at an example of this.